Okay, today we're going to look at word problems and in specific consecutive integer problems and perimeter problems. So whenever you're thinking about solving word problems, I need you to define your variables, meaning tell me what your variables represent. We're going to write an equation. We're going to solve that equation. Check to make sure that your answer makes sense and answer in complete sentences. So we're gonna just take a tactic and I'm gonna show you how to do a couple of problems. So the width of a rectangle is two centimeters less than its length. And the perimeter of the rectangle is 16. What is the length of the rectangle? So the width of my rectangle is two centimeters less than its length. So this is written in terms of length. So we're gonna name this side our length and our width, which is this side, is two centimeters less than its length. So our width is equal to L minus two. And the perimeter of the rectangle is 16 centimeters. So what is the length of the rectangle? So remember, perimeter is two times the length plus two times the width or the total distance around. So L minus two and L. So you would add up all of these sides. And L would be my length. And W would be my width. Okay. So subbing into this, my perimeter is 16. I've got two times my length plus two times my width, which we said was L minus two. So if I distribute, I'm gonna get 16 equals two L plus two L minus four. If I combine my like terms, I'm going to get 16 equals 4L minus 4. If I add 4 to both sides, I'm going to get 20 equals 4L. If I divide by 4, my length is 5. So my answer is the length, because that's all it's asking me for, is 5 centimeters. If I was asking for the width, it would be L minus two. I'm not asking for it, but just so that you know, my width we said was L minus two. So my length is five. So my width is three. All right. So now the perimeter of a triangle is 69 centimeters. Side A is five centimeters shorter than side B, and side C is twice as long as side A. Find the length of each side. So I'm just gonna name them A, B, and C. It doesn't matter which ones you pick, okay? So side A is five centimeters than side B. So A, if B is just B, A is five centimeters shorter than B. So A would be B minus five. And then C is twice as long as A. Well, A is B minus five. So C is twice that, B minus five. And again, it's the perimeter, so I'm gonna add everything up. B minus five plus B plus two times B minus five equals 69. So if I combine my like terms, I'm going to get two B minus five and distribute plus two B minus 10 equals 69. I'm gonna combine my like terms again. I'm gonna get four B minus 15 equals 69. I'm going to add 15 to both sides and I get 4B equals 84. If I divide by B, 
by b. If I divide by 4, b is going to equal 21. Okay, so now my three sides are b is 21, b minus 5, which is 21 minus 5, or 16, and 2 times b minus 5, which was 16, which is 32. So the three sides are 21 centimeters, 16 centimeters, and 32 centimeters. And you must use labels, okay? I don't, could it be chickens, stones, rods? Makes a big difference between centimeters and meters. Okay. Consecutive integers. For something to be consecutive, they're right next to each other. So consecutive would be like one, two, three, four. Okay, now in algebra, if we look at the 1 and we say it's x, 2 would then be x plus 1, 3 would take my original x and add 2 to it, 4 would take my original x and add 3. So I can use this fact to write equations for unknown. For even or odd, for even... Let's start with 2, 4, 6, 8, and let's say that x equals 2. Okay, my next consecutive even number is going to be x, my original x, plus 2. And then x plus 4 and x plus 6. Now, the funny thing is, if you look at the odds, let's just go with 1, 3, 5, 7. If I let 1 be x, my next consecutive odd, which is 3, would again be x plus 2. Then 5 would be my original x plus 4. 7 would be my original x plus 6. Okay. So even and odd, we set up the problems the same. What's going to make it even or odd is actually the setup of the problem. Okay. So whoever writes the problems thinks they work backwards to make sure that it works out, basically. So I want to find three consecutive integers whose sum is 51. So x would be my first. X plus 1 would be my second, and X plus 2 would be my third. And it really helps you to write this down because sometimes these can get complicated. If I add that up, because it's sum, I'm going to get 3X plus 3, and then we said its sum is 51. So if I subtract 3 from both sides, I'm going to get 3X equals 48. If I divide by 3, x is going to equal 16. So that's my first integer. My second is 17, and my third is 18. And if you wanted to double check to see if you're right, just add them up, right? 16 and 17 is 33, and 33 and 18 is 51, so you know you're right. So your integers are 16, 17, and 18. Okay. So now we want to find two consecutive even integers such that the sum of the larger and three times the smaller is 234. So two consecutive even, so x and x plus 2, this would be the smaller, right? Because if I add 2, it makes it bigger. So this would be the larger. Okay. So I've got two consecutive even integers such that the sum of the larger. Okay. So the larger is x plus 2. And 3 times the smaller. So the smaller is x. So plus 3x equals 234. So combining my like terms, I get 4x plus 2 
equals 234. If I subtract 2, I get 4x equals 232. If I divide by 4, x equals 58. And then my next even would be 60. So 58 and 60. Okay. So when you're solving these, we want to just stick with our prescription. Okay. So you're defining the variable, you're writing an equation, and you're solving it. So have a math-tastic day.